In the beginning there was sand, buttloads of sand. Then there were green things and hills and clouds. In the far north and south came the great ice plains. Don't go there, very cold, very cold indeed. Oh, and the Aurora Borealis, which no one has seen ever. I'm telling you, mate, it's bollocks. Let's skip on a bit. After hundreds of millions of years, evolution brought us the dinosaurs. And then they all got wiped out by a bloody great rock. And what have we got left? A field full of these silly sods standing around doing f all as usual. And that's it. Animals will never evolve into anything more exciting. Well, not unless someone throws some radioactive waste down a sewer over a group of abandoned baby turtles. But I don't suppose that'll ever happen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Look out the window and you choose, I really don't mind. Welcome to a brand new channel. I'm Adam and this is Games Forever, the place to go for those of us who remember a time long before ray tracing, 4K and SSDs, when you had no choice but to put up with things like this. Mummy, why are video games shit? If you remember listening to hours of high-pitched screeching while the cassette tape for your ZX Spectrum or Commodore 64 loaded, this is the channel for you. That's right kids, games used to come on tapes, ask your dad. The noise was so bad your spaniel would be in the garden sellotaping his ears to his head. This is also a channel for the games you may have missed out on at some point, possibly because they launched in the same month as Call of Duty, or perhaps you were put off by the initial reviews. But then. This is also a channel for you if you're just doom scrolling on the toilet and sick of your friend's holiday photos on Instagram, the smug, perfectly tanned bastard. Mm. Today's game is a modern indie classic developed by Tribute Games and published by Dotemu, which I'm probably not pronouncing correctly. Dotimo. Dotim. Dotemu. Dotty. Anyway, I'm playing the PS4 version of the game, including the DLC that was released on the 31st of August 2023, but more on that later. You must go underground, my children. So, as I alluded to earlier, thanks to some careless radioactive waste disposal, the four abandoned reptiles have mutated into bipedal ninjas each named after a famous renaissance artist by the anthropomorphic rat that taught them their martial arts skills. <laughs> if I had a pound for every time I've heard that story, I'd have a pound. But before you all rush out and throw your unwanted radioactive waste over turtles, don't bother, it doesn't work in real life. I've tried it. Actually, that's not quite true, it was a tortoise and some WD-40, but it certainly didn't make him any faster and he definitely didn't become a ninja. Shredder's Revenge is a brand new story in the franchise, but to be honest, the cutscenes explaining everything are each about five seconds long and they're a bit like putting curtains up in McDonald's. It's fine they're there, but who cares? The real reason you're here, apart from the fantastic sprite art and an excellent late 80s style soundtrack, is this. And this. And this. Go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, 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 go. I was up all night writing that one. I miss you, Vanilla Ice. Even now I can't lick a cornetto without sobbing. Word to your mother. As you can see, the combat is crunchy and satisfying, and while there are a few new moves over and above the old 8 and 16-bit games in the franchise, as you would expect, nothing has been overcomplicated, I'm pleased to say. You can choose from one of six characters initially, the four Turtles, Splinter and April O'Neil. This rises to seven when you complete the story with the addition of the Friday the 13th look-alike Casey Jones. And then you have a further two characters courtesy of the DLC, in the shape of the ninja lady Karai and Usagi, a sword-wielding bunny in pyjamas. 
The developers have done a great job in making every character look and feel unique, and as with the other excellent Dot Mu stablemate Streets of Rage 4, it's fun to experiment with the different movesets across multiple playthroughs, especially with up to five other friends simultaneously in local or online multiplayer. Of course, things will get button mashy at times, this is an arcade style game after all, but stoving a foot soldier's head in with a pair of nunchucks never gets old. Fun fact, when the Turtles cartoon first came to Britain and to some other European countries, it was known as Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, as the censors were worried about the violent connotations of the word ninja. That had all changed within a few years though, and the original title was eventually reinstated in every region. And then suddenly all the kids went nuts and we were tits deep in ninjas in the UK. By 1989, everyone under the age of 12 owned a katana. 2,000 people died every hour in schools up and down the country and old ladies were taking shurikens to the face on the way to collect their pensions. <laughs> kids, eh? A good ninja racks up his combos and it can be very addictive to get the highest possible score before your chain is broken. Striking while avoiding being hit also powers up a super meter that can be used to unleash a crowd clearing special move, or if your character's level is high enough, the meter can be saved and stacked three times to eventually activate radical mode, which briefly lets you deal more damage. There are some great little touches for multiplayer as well, including some heavy attacks that only work when two characters team up. If a friend is low on health, you can high five him or her to share a portion of your life bar, or if a comrade falls, you have 10 seconds to wave a piece of pizza under their nose to bring them back into the fight. Naturally, pizza cures all ills in the game, and luckily, just like in real life, you can usually find them when you break open crates and other roadside furniture, or you might just see them lying around on the pavement. My favourite's a pizza from a phone box. Marinating in the two inches of piss on the floor just gives some much needed acidity that cuts through the dense topping. Pair that with half a can of cheap lager in which someone has extinguished a cigarette and you've got yourself a meal. There are 16 stages in the main game accessed via this Mario style hub area and you can go back and tackle any level again once you've completed it. There is some incentive to do that as well as there are a few unique challenges in each area. These vary from things like completing the level without getting hit, avoiding getting pancaked by a stampede of zoo animals, or using a certain move a certain number of times. There are also a variety of collectibles hidden in certain objects for you to find. Nothing earth shattering, but it'll certainly keep trophy hunters busy, especially on the harder difficulty settings. It's also possible to upgrade every character's stats and open up new moves purely by playing with them. Extra lives, hit points and super meter bars are available and you'll keep your upgrades permanently for future playthroughs. Aside from walking around and beating people to death, there's also skateboarding or hoverboarding and beating people to death in certain sections. This can be a bit tricky though, partly due to the unseen obstacles flying at you at speed, but also because it becomes harder to judge distance. You'll often be flailing around like a toddler with ADHD just trying to get a hit to connect. Still, if you concentrate on the shadows under each enemy to assist your aim, you'll get by, and these levels do provide a bit of welcome variety. Which leads us on to the most recent update for the game at the time of recording, the Dimension Shellshock DLC, which I can barely say for some reason. The main event here is a survival mode, which if you've played Streets of Rage 4 will seem very familiar. Initially you only have one life bar to fight your way through wave after wave of increasingly vicious and plentiful enemies, collecting shards for a certain type of crystal. At the end of each wave you're given a choice between two perks to take into the next wave and beyond. These might be things like a super pizza that gives you infinite special moves for a while, a buff that means you cause more damage but take more damage, or just a sack full of shards that edges you closer to the next level. Sometimes you can even morph into Bebop, Rocksteady or Shredder himself, albeit with limited moves and health. There are some roguelite mechanics at play here in that you constantly level up your character, entirely separately from the main game making things slightly easier for the next run, with XP bonuses like additional lives or a level skip. 
Again, the artwork on these new single screen stages is fantastic and the DLC also gives you some new colour options for each character, which you're free to don in the story and arcade modes. At the time of recording, Shredder's Revenge is completely free on PS Plus Extra. It was available on Game Pass and could be back, but even if you have to pay for it, you're only talking a maximum of 16 quid for the digital version or around 25 nuggets for a physical copy, if you're an old fart like me who actually likes to own something for his money. And should you buy it? Yes, you should. Add an extra point to the final score if you're a long-time Turtles fan, but even if you've somehow managed to avoid any talk of the awesome foursome over the years, this is a seriously polished beat-em-up that you'll be coming back to again and again. It's perfect for a quick blast here and there, either playing as a group with a few beers on the sofa, or if you're just killing time waiting to go out. Listening to that friend who's always late, crashing around in his bedroom trying to find his own balls as usual. You know the one. Final score, 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do the dishes, put out the recycling and all that other bollocks, and I'll be back very soon with more gaming goodness. Until then, everybody, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja, go ninja, go, 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 go.